Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Bay, Nur Chuck, and this, my friends, is the Thunder Show, aka the Internet's most passionate wine program. And here we are with some brown bags again. And uh, this is the Pinot Noir brown bag show. I'm excited about this. Uh, the crafty and calculated Kay Murph put these together. We'll see what she did. And let's just get right into it. Wine number one, Pinot time. Thank you, Mott. You continue to impress. And let's see what's going on here. On number one. Let's give a little snippy sniff Pinot. You know, we could talk about it all night long. Widely considered some of the uh, best wines in the world. Most wine nerds eventually, in a lot of people's opinion, graduate to Pinot Noir, oftentimes within Burgundy. Um, but clearly what we've seen out of Oregon over the last two decades, three decades, what we're seeing out of Central Otago, what I'm starting to see out of Chile. Uh, Pinot has a lot of potential in a lot of places. Pinot has a lot of potential in a lot of places. That's a lot of peas, Mott. Um, so I'm excited about this. Let's see what's going on here. Wine number one. Uh, light in color, good to see classic in its style. Wouldn't guess Santa Rita Hills. Yes, that's a dig. Little sniffy sniff. Very rose petal, little pepper. Uh, very old world in its approach on the nose. Little hints of strawberry, let's give it a whirl. Good fruit. Wow, this is nice. Very elegant, very structured. Uh, almost like a hot dog flavor in the mid palate. I know, stick with me, I'm sorry, but a little hot doggy uh, in the mid palate, which I like. A little gaminess, meatiness is what I'm kind of referring to, but not like high quality meat. Like a, you know, a New York hot dog for a buck. And, and I'm not talking about like a, you know, a Hebrew national. I'm talking about like the 99 center. Crazy. <laughs> mm. I like this wine. Very well made, very fresh. Almost has Beaujolais like characteristics to it too. Just a little side, little Gamay like. All right, let's do a little rinse. Let's move on to Pinot Noir number two. Very nice. Let's see what's going on here. Great color. Not too bad. Little sniffy sniff. Aromatically challenged, not a big nose. Not a big nose at all. Very tight on the nose. Let's give it a whirl. Taste manufactured, if that makes sense. Um, sour cherries are coming through, but I get the alcohol in a big way. A little balsamic vinegar-like flavors on a back finish. Um, medium to full on Pinot? Wow, this is a very awkward, almost schizophrenic Pinot Noir. Wow, the person making this would be mad at the schizophrenic Pinot Noir thing, right? Is that a bad content? Was that a bad thing to say? It's, it's, let's put schizophrenic bad thing to say. No, it's fair. Yeah. Brandon? Mm -hmm. Kind of bad, right? I don't know. I, I think we all know I mean no ill harm, but here's what I mean. This wine cannot find itself. Like, I feel like, and I'm not doing the little drag, you know, little monsters for, you know, I, I, it's not the oak monster. It's like, Wait a minute, Mott. Did Lady Gaga steal the little monsters from the oak monster? She does do this and monsters. Gaga, I'm coming after you. I, that just hit me. I'm going to watch that moment where I just get, wait a minute. Anyway, this wine's struggling to find itself, um, much like the teenagers that Gaga sings for. I, I think this wine is awkward and off balance, has some potential to be good, but the alcohol spikes, I don't like it. And rarely, rarely do I call out the winemaker, but this feels to me, man, I'm going to get a nasty winemaker. My, we had the one guy from, we've had some an angry emails lately. I'm going there though, guys. This, listen. So what I do on this show, I gotta call it like I see it. I hate this wine. And I, I find it disjointed, awkward, and either, yes, Bob? I'm riffing it, right? I'm in a weird mood, I'm in a good mood. I, I, I'm in a happy place. We're getting very close to a thousand. I feel like we're accomplishing something very special. And I mean no disrespect. This is just my palate, I could be wrong. I, I just find this wine extremely awkward. And, and I do find it to be not well made and I, I don't like it. And I think the most fearful man in the room right now is Brandon Warnicky, because he can't wait to see it being unveiled. Because one way or the other, you gotta sell it, baby. <laughs> All right, wine number three. Zoom in on Brandon. Look at this, the fear, Brandon. How do you get, how many cases of wine number two are you gonna sell this weekend? Not many. <laughs> All right, let's pour. Let's pour this. I like it. Wine number three. 
Let's see what's going on here. A little sniffy sniff. This smells great. Big nose, um, very fresh, vibrant strawberries. Old world and new world flavors. What that means is I get a little bit of like, uh, you excited about wine number two? No, I was thinking about making a batter out of wine number two. Yeah. Um, you know, little strawberries, a uh, little bacon fat, little earthy tones. Smells to me California-like in its approach, but like, or Oregon, uh, Oregon. Um, interesting, new world. I, I'm not going burgundy. Mm. My prediction is this is a New World Pinot doing a very good impression of Old World Pinot. And it's a battle between these two. With this one coming in third place. Um, different wines, um, old world, new world, and, and it's attack. I'm gonna call, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna slightly go towards the old world, just like a little more, that savory flavor's a little more. All right, in last place, with, uh, with 71 points, <laughs> I'm, I'm really worried, I hope this isn't a friend, is, the Mount Difficulty 2008 Central Otago Pinot Noir, 90 points, Lisa Peretti Brown from the Wine Advocate, 28 bucks. You know, Lisa and I disagree, and I could be wrong. And listen, I know a lot of people are gonna watch this right now, um, mainly because of the show I just put on, and I respect that. You know, listen, I'm a, I'm a boisterous character. Um, I take this stuff very seriously. I, I have no interest in hurting people's feelings or swaying the audience in the wrong direction. I just did not find this wine well made at all, and I have been a fan of mouth difficulty in the past, but I just didn't see it. I didn't see it at all, and I could be wrong. It's just one man's palate. All right, and <laughs> Brandon, zoom in on Brandon. Let's see, Brandon. How you doing, Brandon? Yeah. I'm good. All right, uh, in second place, in a very close second, California wine or Oregon wine, acting like an old world wine in my opinion, I could be wrong, 90 points. Yep, uh, Lachini, Pinot Noir, uh, family estate, Shehalem Mountain, Pinot Noir, 30 bucks, 92 points, Spectator, and uh, it was New World, and it did act Old World, and it was very well made, and I enjoyed that. And the winner at 90 plus, so barely just a skim ahead, thought it was a little more Old World in its approach, and I was correct again. Trouty, I'm, I'm, showing, I'm showing some skills tonight, Brandon. Just saying. The Domaine d'Arlot, uh, Nui St. George, Cuvée Les Petites Arlot, uh, 2008, 87 to 89 Meadows, 36 US dollars, really enjoyed this. Um, Meadows is, is just iconically difficult. Uh, I think it's showing better than that. 36 Bones, Le Arlo is a, a, an amazing producer. Daniel Jonas, uh, who's a two-time guest of Wine Library TV, one of the rare, I mean that is going to be a trivia pursuit question one day, just saying. Um, 36 bucks, he is the importer. Very good show, very interesting results. Felt really good, I'm proud of my palate. I'm feeling like I'm zoning in my flavors. It's really interesting to break those down completely proper, just saying. And feel awkward, you know, not excited about what ha happened over there, but it is a necessity of the show and just, you know, gotta express my feelings to what I do, so. Question of the day. Um, so Lisa and I are, are, are what, 13 points apart uh, on our ratings, or 71, 19 points apart on our score there. What is the last wine that you scored either high in your mind, you know, you know, it could be five stars, 10, delicious, but was considered sucky or reverse? What is the last time you had a big, how about this? There's plenty of wines you probably have tried through the years based on my recommendation. I might have lost my mind, delicious, and you're like, Gary lost his mind, or flip side, I hated this, you might love it. What is the, you know, whether it's me or Spectator Parker or even your friend circle, like all my buddies love Yellowtail Shiraz, I hate it. All my buddies make fun of Kendall Jackson Chardonnay, I love it. What's that discrepancy wine that has hit your scene in the last couple years? You, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world, whether they like it or not. Tom Brady passed.